Hey everybody, this is Cinema 77, horror and cult film lover, and I'm back again with another video. <clears throat> Today we're going to be talking about a pretty intense film, and uh, some people have said that this movie inspired Quentin Tarantino to make Kill Bill, so we'll see about that. But anyway, the movie we're going to talk about today is Thriller, A Cruel Picture. You see, this is released from Synapse Films, and this is the limited edition. Now, this is the extra strength version of the movie. There's actually a toned down version of the movie. And the way you could, <clears throat> the way you could tell the difference, I'll get to that in a minute, but um, the way you could tell the difference between the maximum strength version of the movie is this one has the red cover, you know, where everything is all in red and everything else, the background's in red, whereas the, uh, the toned down version is a yellow cover version of the movie. So now um, the movie is directed by Bo A. Vabinius and the movie stars Christina Lindbergh right there. Who, um, you know, she's beautiful model, actress, you know. Um, Dead Pit Radio, they talked about her. Wes Vance, he talked about her plenty of times. But um, anyway, so, or Creepy Kentuckian. But uh, anyway, though, yeah, this movie, um, this movie, I'm going to be honest with you, this movie is really grim. And there's, this movie has really no humor in it or anything like that. You know, the movie starts off. You start off with a little girl who she is sexually assaulted and raped and left for dead. And, uh, you know, her parents find her and um, basically the experience left her as a mute and she doesn't talk. And so basically, so for years she's been working on a farm and, you know, just helping take care of the animals and um, just kind of, you know, minding her own business and living her own life. Well, one day she's going home. It's a little bit late and, you know, she's trying to catch the bus and everything else. Well, this guy named Tony, he stops by and he picks her up. And the girl is Christina Lindbergh's character. And um, I believe the character's name is Madeline. And uh, so he picks her up and he offers to, you know, drive her home. But he, you know, asks her if she'd like to go out to dinner first. And so she accepts and everything. So he takes her out to dinner and brings her back to his place. And he has this nice apartment and <clears throat> everything. And so he, you know, asks her if she wants a drink. He gives her a drink. Well, it turns out the drink is laced with drugs. And so she passes out. And then he turns around and he in starts injecting her with heroin. And this goes on for a few days. And when she finally wakes up, he explains to her that she's now hooked on heroin and that uh, she basically she belongs to him now. And that uh, he will continue to give her her fix if she earns money for him. And of course, the way she earns money for him is she has to be a prostitute and she has to satisfy these clients sexually and do what do what she's told and everything else. And if she does that in return, she'll, you know, she'll get her fix. And she'll, he even tells her like, you know, if, if you do right by this, you know, you'll get spending money and you'll even get a chance to, you know, get out of here once in a while, go out shopping or, you know, you have some time off or whatever else. And, uh, at first she doesn't go for it. Um, they, you know, she gets ready. This, this client comes in and, and uh, she scratches his face and then he goes and, you know, tells this guy, Tony, about, you know, how am I supposed to explain this to my wife and everything else. And so Tony goes in and and to punish her, he takes a, a scalpel and he cuts out one of her eyes. And um, I don't know if that's on the toned down version of the movie. Uh, it may not be. That may be one of the things that was excised from that. But it's on this version. You see it. And uh, if I understand correctly, the way the... Um, the way the shot was handled was that it was actually the way they did was they took the scalpel and they stuck it into the eyeball of a cadaver. And that's how they got the shot. And as you can see right there, actually that's the part where he is ready to gouge her eye out. And, uh, so yeah, so, but anyway though, so, you know, after that she decides to obey and everything. And, uh, she meets another girl that it turns out she, this girl's in the same situation that she was in. And then later on, you know, it's like she goes to find out what happened to this girl. And, you know, it's never explained what happens to her. It's just, she's gone. And when, she, you know, she goes into the room, you know, Madeline goes into the room and, uh, the, the bed and everything is just covered in blood. And so, you know, that whatever happened to her was not pretty. 
and this girl was telling her about how she wanted to get out and she wanted to escape and everything else. And it's like, you know, unfortunately didn't get the chance. So, I mean, so already Madeline's got all these reasons to, uh, to want to get revenge. And, um, so, you know, but she has one of her days off and she's going to, you know, she's going to visit her parents. And then as she's approaching her home, she sees a funeral procession. And, uh, if, you know, she comes to find out that the funeral is actually the funeral of both of her parents. And what ended up happening was, was that, uh, Tony, he ended up sending a, a letter to her parents saying that she hated her parents and never wanted to see them again. And, and she just, you know, wanted to get away from them and all that stuff. And apparently the, the parents were so distraught over the letter that they end up taking their own lives. So it's like, you know, Madeline seeing this and realizing what had, what has happened to her, what's been done to her. She decides she's not going to take it anymore and she's going to, um, she's going to get revenge. So she's, you know, she's still servicing these clients and she's getting, you know, her fix and stuff. And, you know, but at the same time, she's, she's saving up all her money and she starts taking lessons on, you know, like, uh, she starts taking like karate lessons and she starts taking, learning how to shoot a gun and, um, you know, learning how to, you know, drive fast and everything else. And so she starts kind of like preparing her revenge and she keeps doing it. And in the meanwhile, um, she's still satisfying her sexual clients and stuff. And, and usually it's like, you only see like three of them. And one is this big kind of beefy guy. And, um, and he's basically kind of like, just kind of pushes her on the bed and just goes on her. And then one is actually a lesbian and, and the lesbian, you know, you kind of think is going to be, you know, like, um, gentle to her or whatever. And it's like, no, not even closely. You know, she, this, this woman starts, you know, slapping her, beating her and, and, you know, being rough with her and, you know, uh, hurting her and all this other kind of stuff. And then like the other guy, his main thing is, is he just wants to take pictures of her all the time. And, but anyway, though, if, but, um, you know, the more money she makes, the more she keeps, you know, uh, plotting her revenge and her escape and, and, you know, um, like she manages to find a connection who can hook her up with enough heroin. So, she, you know, she doesn't have to keep going to this guy, Tony, to get her fix all the time. She has enough to to sustain her. And, uh, you know, she buys a car and, you know, um, she, you know, she goes, she actually, she, funny thing is, she doesn't buy guns. She actually steals guns from the, the shooting range that, uh, you know, she was going to learn to shoot at and stuff. But anyway, though, she finally, she prepares her revenge and then she goes and she takes revenge on, you know, the, uh, the sexual clients and, uh, she goes and, you know, she's looking for Tony. She wants to get revenge on him. And, um, there's, you know, and, uh, there's a scene where she's, you know, fighting with the cops and all this other kind of stuff. But, um, uh, you know, you know, um, this movie does have, it's a rape revenge film, obviously it's, um, it definitely has action scenes in it. So, I mean, that's kind of the thing. The movie is kind of hard to categorize. So you say, well, is it a horror film? Is it an action film? I mean, it's definitely a cult film, you know? So that's kind of the thing. It's kind of like, where does this movie, you know, fall into place at? And, uh, but the thing is what really makes this movie explicit. Like I said, I wasn't sure if the, in the toned down version, I don't know if they show the, the scene of her getting her eye gouged out with the scalpel. But uh, I'm not sure about that. But the one thing I do know that's not in the toned down version is the uh, the scenes where she's satisfying her sexual clients. Because, in you know, in the maximum strength version, the scenes are pornographic, meaning you see pen there's close ups of penetration. There's um, part of my language, but there's beaver shots. There's cum shots. There's, you know, all that kind of stuff. Uh, it's all in here. So, you know, like I said, this is the maximum strength version of the movie. But if you get the toned down version of the movie, that's those shots are excise. And uh, but anyway, though, yeah, this this comes with a load of features, uh, uncut, uncensored version with all the sex and gore, original Swedish language in English dub options, uh, optional English subtitles, extensive still galleries of rare behind the scenes photos, including many candid new photos of Christina Lidberg on the set. Original TV spot and theatrical trailers, outtakes, alternate harbor fight sequence reconstructed from rare vault materials, 
uh, thriller, a cruel lab mistake, rare photos detailing an unused fight sequence ruined by the film lab during production, thriller, the story and pictures, actor, director, filmographies, and chapter selections. So, yeah, so, but, um, yeah, this is, you know, over time, this movie has definitely become a cult film, and uh, it's been um, cited as one of the movies that has inspired Quentin Tarantino specifically to make Kill Bill. You know, they say, like, well, look at Christina Lindbergh there with the eye patch, and, you know, that was, like, the uh, the inspiration for Daryl Hannah to have an eye patch in Kill Bill and stuff like that, so. But, um, yeah, so. Actually, I'm very surprised that this movie has not made its way to Blu-ray yet. I wonder if it ever does get to Blu-ray. I wonder if uh, that would ever be, like, an option. You could you could choose between the maximum strength version of the movie or the toned-down version of the movie. So, it's like, yeah, I'm surprised this hasn't even been put on Blu-ray yet. So, anyway, though, there's the, there's the back of it. But yeah, this is a pretty intense film. And, um, so... But yeah, this is Thriller or Cruel Picture. Like I said, this is a very grim movie. It's not, there's no humor in it. Um, it's played definitely straight. Um, it's not a bad movie, but, you know, you could watch this movie and see, like, the explicit sex scenes and stuff and the violence, and you could question, well, does it really need to be in there? So, I mean, there's that. But um, ultimately, yeah, this is a pretty good little flick. Um, you know, uh, it's not really the kind of movie I could sit here and watch over and over and over again, but it's still, it is a good movie. And the ending is kind of a little off though. It's like, you know, I mean, she's getting her revenge and you're kind of not exactly sure what happens. You know, the ending is kind of the very tail ending of the movie is kind of ambiguous as to what really happens. So, but anyway though, yeah, that's going to pretty much be about it for this movie. Um, I would say, yeah, give it a shot. If you're, if you're definitely interested, if you're into extreme movies, you know, if you're wanting to build an extreme movie collection, like you want movies that really push the limits and stuff, this is definitely one you ought to get. Um, I don't know if this movie's even still in print or not. It's gone. I know it's gone out of print a couple of times, so I'm not sure if it's. I'm not sure if it's available this very minute, but uh, yeah. So, but I will say though, if, if you decide you want to get this movie and you want to get the maximum strength version, then remember you got to get the one with the red case. Because if you get the one with the yellow case, you're getting the toned down version. So, so take that for what it's worth. But um, anyway, yeah, that's uh, yeah. I can't really think of too much else to say about this movie. I've explained it, and so but yeah, it's a pretty good movie. Um, like I said, it's just not something I would watch all the time, but uh, it's still it's really good. So anyway, though, so that's going to do it for uh, Thriller or Cruel Picture. Um, if anybody took the time to watch this video. I thank you so much for doing so. Um, if you liked the video, please like and subscribe. And uh, this is Cinema 77, horror cult film lover. And hopefully you love cruel pictures as much as I do. And I'll see you later. Bye-bye.